The Law of Destiny In the proof of successive lives, the path of existence cleared, the root surely and firmly traced the soul clearly sees its destiny, which is the ascension toward the highest wisdom, toward the most effulgent light. Equity governs the world, our happiness is in our own hands. The universe cannot fail, its goal is beauty, its means justice and love. All chimerical fear, all terror of the beyond, vanishes. In place of doubting, The future, man tastes the joys of eternal certitudes, with confidence in tomorrow, while his strength is doubled. And his efforts toward good, are increased a hundredfold. Yet one more question arises. By what secret springs, is the action of justice exercised, in the chain of our lives? Let us first say, that the working of human justice offers us, nothing comparable, to the divine law of destiny, that is accomplished of itself, without exterior intervention for individuals, and for societies. It is a law of equilibrium, and establishes order in the moral world, in the same manner that the law of gravitation and weight assures order and equilibrium, and establishes order in the moral world, in the same manner, that the law of the gravitation and weight assures order, and equilibrium in the physical world. Its mechanism is at once simple, and grand. All wrongdoing is paid for in sorrow. All that man, does in accord with the law of good procures peace, and elevation, and each violation provokes suffering. Suffering enters into the depths, of the being and eliminates the germs of evil. It prolongs its action, and returns again and again, until all unworthy qualities, develop into good, and vibrate in unison with divine force. But in the pursuit of this great work, the compensations are reserved, for the soul. Joys, affections, periods of repose, and happiness, alternate. In the chaplet, of lives with existences of strife, ransom, and reparation. So all is arranged with an art, and a science, and a beauty infinite in the work of providence. During his course, man in his weakness, and ignorance, often transgresses the law hence his trials, his infirmities, and material servitude. But as soon as he is enlightened, as soon as he learns, to put his actions in harmony with universal laws, he is less, and less exposed to adversity. Our acts, and our thoughts translate themselves into vibratory movements, and their center of emission, by the frequent repetition, of these acts, and thoughts, is transformed little, by little into a powerful generator of good and evil. The being thus clarifies itself, by the nature of the energies, of which it is the center. But while good forces, destroy themselves, by their own efforts as they return, to their center, and are transformed into unhappy consequences, the evil being is forced like all others to evolve, and the vibrations of his acts, and thoughts return to him, oppressing him, and forcing on him, soon or late, the necessity of reforming himself. This phenomenon explains itself scientifically, by the correlation of forces, the vibratory synchronism, which leads always from effect to cause. This fact is demonstrated, in times of epidemics, and contagious maladies. It is always the persons, whose vital condition harmonizes, with the morbid causes in action, who are affected, while those with strong wills, and devoid, of fear are generally immune. So it is in the mind order. Thoughts of hate and vengeance, desire to injure, coming from outside, cannot act on us, or influence us, unless they encounter in us similar 
impulses, which vibrate in unison with them. If these are not found, they return to the one projecting the evil thoughts, to strike him in his turn, whether in the present or the future, somewhere in the course of his destiny. The law of repercussion, of acts has then something mechanic, and automatic in appearance. Nevertheless, when it becomes a question, of great expiations, of sorrowful reparations, great spirits intervene. To regulate, and accelerate the march, of souls in evolution. Their hour is exercised particularly, at the hour of reincarnation, in order to guide souls in their choice, and to determine the best, and most favorable conditions for the healing, of their moral maladies, and to aid them to ransom anterior faults. We must not think that every trial, of humanity is the result of past sins. All those who suffer are not forced, to it as an expiation of evil deeds. Many are simply, spirits eager for progress who have chosen, painful lives of labor, for the moral benefit to be so obtained. It is, however, in general the undeveloped soul ignorant, of the law of harmony which encounters, the greatest suffering. Gradually he must re-establish, the law of equilibrium, and must learn that he reaps exactly what he sows. By continual actions, each being refines or materializes his etheric envelope, the vehicle of the soul, the instrument, which is used for all manifestations, and upon which is molded the physical body at each birth. We have already seen that our situation in the next plane of existence results from repeated actions, which our thoughts and wills have exercised constantly on the etheric double. Following their nature and object, they transform it little by little into a subtle and radiant organism open to the highest perceptions, to the most delicate sensations of space, capable of vibrating harmoniously with elevated spirits. In an inverse sense, they make it, in opaque gross form, chained to the earth, by its materiality, or even condemned, to lower regions. We can understand, how continual action of the thought, and the will, exercised for centuries, of existence upon the etheric body, creates and develops physical tastes, as well as our intellectual, and moral qualities. Our tastes, for each kind of work, our ability, our dexterity in all things, these are the result of immeasurable mechanical actions, accumulated, and registered by the subtle body, and the memory of them is engraved, on the subconscious mind. At rebirth, these abilities are transmitted, by a new education to the external consciousness, and material organs. Thus is explained the remarkable, and superior ability of many natural musicians, which surprises the world. It is the same with the moral faculties, and virtues, and all the riches the soul acquires, in long cycles of time. Genius is an immense effort, of the intellectual order, and holiness has been conquered, by secular strife against the passions, and inferior attractions. Every time, that we accomplish a good, or generous action, or do a work of charity, and devotion, or make a sacrifice, do we not feel a sense, of exaltation? Something expands, within us, and a flame is kindled, which revivifies the depths, of our nature. This is not illusionary, the spirit is radiated by every altruistic thought, by every act of unselfish love. If these thoughts, and acts multiply, and increase, and accumulate, the man will find himself transformed, at the end of his earthly existence. The soul, and its etheric envelope will have acquired, an intense power of radiation. If the thoughts are bad, the acts culpable, then these wrong habits produce a contraction, of the spiritual being, 
and charge it with gross and dark fluids. Violence, cruelty, murder, and suicide produce results, which return birth, after birth on the material. Body, in the form, of nervous maladies, deformity, and madness. Impure lives, drunkenness, debauchery, and self-indulgence in luxury, produce in future lives weakness, and lack of vigor, health, and beauty. The human being, who today is abusing, his vital forces by wrong habits, is preparing a miserable existence, for himself in a future incarnation. Sometimes the reparation is effected, by a long life of suffering, which destroys in him the causes, of evil, again and may be affected, in a short, troubled, life with a tragic death. A mysterious attraction, sometimes, brings together, a crowd of people to a given point, that they may expiate, in a collective death past. Conditions, as in great catastrophes on sea, or land. Short lives, are often the complement, of proceeding. Existences, where the individual, by his excesses, or other abuses, abridged his normal time, on earth. But other causes, enter into the death of infants, that is sometimes given, as an educating trial, for the parents, and for the incarnating spirit. Sometimes it is simply, a false entrance on the stage, of life from physical causes, or the fault of adaptation, to the etheric fluid. In these cases the incarnation, is repeated in the same environment, under more favorable conditions. To assure the refining, of the moral nature, there is a discipline, of the thoughts to establish, and a hygiene, of the soul to follow, as there is a physical hygiene to observe, for the maintenance of the health, of the body. We see that the constant action, of the thought, and will on the etheric body produces absolutely, just results. Each receives the imperishable fruits, of his past and present. This fruit is not the effect, of outside causes, but of interior ones, a chain which produces in us pain, and joy, effort and success, fault and chastisement. It is in the intimate secrecy, of our thoughts, and in the full lights, of our actions that we must seek. The efficient cause, of our present, and future situations. We are placed according, to our merits, in the environment created, by our former thoughts, and acts. If we are unhappy, it is because we have not become enlightened, enough to play a better role. But our condition will ameliorate, as soon as we know, how to awaken in ourselves, a disinterested love, of justice and truth. To perfect the being, to unceasingly embellish the inner nature, to augment its value, and construct the edifice, of the consciousness, such is the aim of evolution. Each one of us possesses, that particular primordial genius spoken, of by the Druids, a realization, of special forms of divine thought. God has placed in the depths of the soul germs, of faculties powerful, and varied. The soul is called upon, to develop above all others one special, form of genius, until it is brought, to its highest excellence. These multiple aspects, of intelligent wisdom, and beauty are eternal. Music, poetry, eloquence, invention, prevision of the future, and hidden things. The gifts of education, the power to heal, are some of the innumerable forms, in projecting the human entity. The divine thought impregnates, that one of these forces assigned, particularly to the soul in the vast universal. Concert. The mission of the being, his destiny, his actions in the general evolution, grow more, and more precise, and from being latent, and confused become accentuated, and clearly defined in the measure, that he climbs the immense spiral. The inspirations, that he receives from on high respond, 
to those in his character. According to his need, and his appeals will he hear in his own depths, the divine melody. It is so God, by the infinite variety, of contrasts, causes the great harmony, to vibrate in nature, and in the breast of humanity. If the soul abuses these gifts, or applies them to evil purposes, if it entertains vanity or pride, it must in expiation, be reborn in an organism powerless, to manifest them. It will live an unknown genius, humiliated among men. Long enough for sorrow, to lift it above the excesses, of its own personality, and to permit it to take a sublime flight, towards its ideal. Oh, you who peruse these pages, elevate your thoughts, and your resolutions to the high tasks, which fall to you. The road to the infinite, opens before you, sown with inextinguishable marvels. Wherever your flight is directed, subjects for study, will await you, with inexhaustible sources, of joy and beauty. Always are their unsuspected horizons, succeeding horizons known. All is beauty in the divine work, and in your ascension it is reserved, for you to enjoy innumerable aspects smiling, or terrible, from the delicate flower to the flamboyant stars, and to wait at the unfolding, of worlds and humanities. At the same time, you will feel your understanding, of celestial things grow, and there will awaken in you, an ardent desire to perpetuate God, to plunge in Him, in His light, His love, in God our source, our essence, our life. Human intelligence, cannot describe the futures presented, the ascension perceived. Our spirit shut in a perishable organism, cannot therein find the necessary resources, to express these splendors. The soul, with its profound intuitions, has the sense of infinite things, in which it will participate, and to which it aspires. It seeks in vain to express them, in feeble human words, in vain to translate those eternal truths, in the poor language, of Earth. But the evolved consciousness perceives, the subtle radiations, of the superior life. A day will come when, the soul, will dominate time and space, and a century will be no more for it, than an instant, and with a flash of, thought it, will crown the summits, of heaven. Its subtle organism, refined by thousands of lives, will vibrate to, every breeze, to every voice, to all the appeals, of immensity. Its memory will plunge into vanished ages, and it will revive, at will all, that it has lived, and call to it, or join all the cherished souls, who have partaken, of its joys, and sorrows. For all affections of the past are found, in the life of space, and new ties are formed, binding us, closer, and closer in a more powerful, and perfect communion. Believe, love, hope. Man my brother, and then act. Apply yourself, and put into your work the reflections, the thoughts, and the aspirations of your heart, the joys and certitudes, of your immortal soul. Communicate your faith, to the intelligent minds which surround you, that they may be able, to second your efforts for the uplifting, of the world, and the opening of a way for the evolution, of the spirits, by and by will. Come science, virile and renewed, no longer the science of prejudices, routines, and worn out methods, but a science open to all kinds of research, to all investigations, the science of the invisible, and the beyond. It will come to fertilize understanding, to enlighten intelligence and to fortify conscience. Faith in the survival, of the soul stands upon the rock, of experiences and defies criticism. 
An art purer, and more idealistic, illumined by the light that never dies, will come to vivify the spirit, of Earth. It will be the same with religious beliefs, and systems. In the flight of thought, to lift truths from their relative order, to the order superior, they will approach, join, and mingle, making of the multiple faiths, of the past, hostile or dead, a living faith which will unite humanity, in adoration and prayer. Work with all the power of your being to prepare this evolution. Human activities must be used with more intensity, on this route of the spirit. After physical humanity, mind humanity must be created, after the body, the soul, that which has been conquered by material energy has been lost in deeper knowledge and revelation of inner senses. Man has triumphed over the visible world, now it remains for him to conquer the interior world and to know the secrets of his splendid future. Instead of arguing, act discussion is vain criticism sterile, but action is grand, when it consists, of making yourself, and others greater. Do not forget that you work for yourself, in working for others. The universe, like your soul, renews itself, and is perpetuated and embellished, without cessation by work, aunt. Exchange. God is perfecting his work, enjoy it as you rejoice, in embellishing your own, your most beautiful work as yourself. By constant efforts, you can make your intelligence, and your consciousness unadmirable. Work, which you will enjoy indefinitely. From each fertile crucible, of a life you should come forth capable, to perform new tasks, and higher missions appropriate, to your strength and each one should be recompense, and a joy. So with your hands, day by day you fashion your destiny. You will be reborn, in such forms as your desires construct, until your desires prepare for you forms, and organisms superior to those of Earth. You will be reborn, in the environment you love, near to the being you have loved, and they will live with, and for them. Then, when your earthly evolution is finished, when you have exalted your faculties, and forces to a sufficient degree, of power, when you have emptied the cup, of suffering, bitterness, and felicity that the world has offered you, and communed, with all the aspects, of human genius, then you will mount with your dear ones. toward other more beautiful worlds, worlds of peace and harmony. Your lost earth envelope returning to dust, your pure essence, reaching the spiritual regions, your memory, and your work, still sustaining men in their strife, and trials, you can say with serene joy my life on. Earth has not been sterile, my efforts have not been in vain. Thank you for watching our video. Please like and subscribe.